Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. Based on some of the comments I've received, today I'm going to do a VBOTS tutorial video in C. In this video, we'll go over how to write a controller code for VBOTS in C to drive a differential drive robot. If you're looking for controller code in another programming language such as Python, look for the link in the description below. I'll include all of the timings here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm starting here with the VBOTS world and a differential drive robot that was built in a previous video. I'll link that video on the top right corner and in the description below. You can also choose to use another differential drive robot such as EPUC which is included in the VBOTS library. Now our next step is to write a controller. To do this, go to the top menu bar, click on wizards and then click on the new robot controller. Click continue and for my language, I'm choosing C. Click continue and you have the option to name your controller. Click continue and then make sure to select open controller in text editor option. Then click done. This should open the controller you just created on your side in a text editor. As you can see, this will already include some basic code that is required. In general, in VBOTS and robotics, when you write your controller code, you're looking at initializing your variables. This includes initializing your motors and sensors, having your controller code, followed by cleanup. Cleanup usually include things such as relieving memory. In your main loop, you have three steps. First is reading the sensor data. Second is processing that sensor data. And third is making decision based on that sensor data. In our current example, we are simply going to create instances for our motors and then give commands to our motors. As you can see, VBOT already gives us some basic information on how to use this. Your motors are also called actuators and you'll use the robot get device function to get access to your motors and initialize them. Now to get your motor names, go to the VBOT scene tree and click on robot. Now if you're using another robot such as EPUC which is available in the VBOTS library, make sure to right click on it and click on convert to base node option. Inside robot, Look at children, hinge joint, devices, and you should be able to see the name of motor. Here, our rotational motor is called motor one. If you look at our second hinge joint device, rotational motor, you can see it's called motor two. Now let's go to our code and use this information. To use motors in VBOT, include the following header. Next, we'll initialize the motor. Let's call them left motor and right motor. As you can see, when you're coding in C, VBOTS will show this helpful pop-up menu with all the functions available. We'll be using robot get device. And as we had seen in the VBOTS scene tree, our motor is called motor1. Similarly, we'll create right motor with motor2.
In VBOTs with motors, you can either set their position or velocity to drive it. We'll drive our motor by setting the velocity. To drive the motor by using velocity, you set its position to infinity. So to initialize, we'll set our position to infinity and our velocity to zero. To set the motor to infinity, we'll make use of the WB motor set position function in VBOTs. Give it the motor instance, which in this case is left motor and infinity. Once again, there's a helpful menu that pops up, which makes it easier to write the function correctly. Similarly, set position of right motor to infinity. Next, we'll set the velocity to zero. For this, we'll use the function wb motor set velocity. Similarly, set the velocity for right motor as zero. Next, to drive our motor, we need to set velocity. Now the max velocity is 6.28. So first, let's define that. Make sure to keep saving your code. Next, we come to the main loop, which is the while loop. Everything up until while loop will be run once. This is why most of our initialization is done here. Everything inside while loop runs continuously as long as the simulation is running. So when you hit play in your simulation, initialization is done once and then this while loop continues to run forever. When you either pause or stop your simulation, it will exit this while loop, do the cleanup and close the program. For this particular VBOTS project, we are not using any sensors, so we won't be reading or processing them. We'll simply be driving our robot using velocity. To do this, we'll make use of the VBOTS function motor set velocity as we did during initialization. Make sure to set both left and right motor. For now, let's set it to max speed and see what happens. Make sure to save your code. Because this is code in C, you have to build your code. To do this, use this option which has a logo similar to setting. If you hover, it will also say build the current project. Click on it. You can either use reset or reload. Now this is important. Make sure to change the controller for your VBOTS robot. So go to the VBOTS scene tree under robot. Go to the option called controller. Hit select and look through the menu to choose your controller. Select and click OK. Make sure to hit save. So this controller is saved as a setting for this VBOTS world. Now let's run our simulation. I did get a warning once and this has happened to me a few times. Simply hit reset and try again. If it doesn't work the second time, look to your code to make sure there are no errors. As you can see, the robot is driving straight. Let's talk a little bit about how to drive a differential drive robot by controlling the left and right motor speed. For a differential drive robot, there are two ways to turn your robot around. Either stop one wheel or slow it down and let the other wheel go at the same speed or turn the wheels around in different directions. So let's say you want to go left. You turn your left wheel backwards and you turn your right wheel forward. And in this way, your robot can take a left. Let's give that a try. Go back to your code and set your left motor to negative max speed and your right motor is to positive max speed. Make sure to save your code and build it again. Make sure your controller on the VBOT scene tree is pointing to your controller code.
As you can see, the robot is turning in position. This is the same behavior you will get if you change your right motor to negative speed and your left motor to positive speed. However, the robot will spin in the opposite direction. Now, what if you want your robot to take a left while driving forward? To do this, as mentioned before, you will have to give different speed to different motors. So let's give that a try. I'm giving half the speed, which is 0.5 to my left motor and giving full speed to my right motor. Make sure to save your code and build it again. As you can see, the robot is now driving forward and taking a left turn. If I were to change it such that I'm giving a quarter speed that is 0.25 times max to my left motor and full to my right motor, the robot will take smaller turns. Let's give that a try. Once again, press the play button on the VBOTS menu option to run the simulation. As you can see, it's now taking smaller turns. By simply changing the speed for your left and right motor, you can change the behavior of your robot. In general, you will use either sensors or time or some other factor to decide at what instant what motor commands should be given. If you'd like me to make another tutorial on how to give different commands by changing either time or some other factor, tell me in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.